good morning, everyone. Welcome again to our live stream. I am Stacy. I'm with DocuSign. I'm a senior program manager here, and I am the Good Code Hackathon lady. I'm quite sure. I'm quite sure you know at this point. So, thank you for joining us today. Whether you're joining us live or on demand, we appreciate you being here. Today, we're going to talk to Inbar Gazette with uh, with DocuSign and all about DocuSign API tips and tricks. So, this is going to get you on your way to an amazing project. And this would be, this is going to be an amazing uh, session for whether you're doing the Jane Goodall Institute challenge or our DocuSign challenge. With that said, let's talk about our challenges. So we have two ways to win. You can choose our Jane Goodall Institute challenge. That's where you integrate geospatial field data collection and camera trap workflows for conserving chimpanzees and their habitats for the Jane Goodall Institute. Or, and or, you can choose the Greater Good Challenge, which you're going to build an innovative web or modal, mobile application that automates and connects agreement slash e-signature processes for a nonprofit, uh, nonprofit of your choice. So our nonprofit organizations need to be a registered 501c3. That is a U.S. designation. So you can also have a local equivalent um, for your country where uh, if you're choosing a nonprofit organization within your own local country, and that's to be eligible to win. We do check on this. So please make sure that you have checked prior to starting that this is a registered organization. As well, we've had several questions uh, regarding uh, whether or not you need to check in with that local organization or that nonprofit organization prior to starting work on it, and you do not. So go ahead and um, you know do your uh, application and uh, make sure you do let them know that you're doing it because uh, we had great success last year with one of our winners uh, with the Be Positive Foundation, and uh, which they're implementing that uh, that. Uh, application that was created by Neil Sort uh, Sorter. So that's great. All right. Now let's talk about our prizes. We have 50,000 USD uh, to go around. So first prize, 15,000 for our Jane Goodall Institute challenge. That is, uh, we're giving you more for that challenge because we really want you to participate in that. Jane Goodall Institute is a wonderful partner with uh, DocuSign as well. They are just an amazing organization and we would love you to help them out. We also have our Greater Good, Greater Good Challenge, and that first prize is $10,000. I want you to pay, pay close attention to uh, our bonus prize, especially for this specific, uh, this specific live stream. We have our Beyond DocuSign e-signature uh, bonus prize. So this bonus prize is when you're taking it that you're going the next level um, on DocuSign, not just focusing on a basic e-signature application. You're going beyond the e-signature. And again, this is where Inbar is going to help a lot with that today. That's a bonus of $5,000. And whether or not you win uh, one of the first through third prizes in either one of those categories, you can still win a bonus prize. So if you're a winner or not in the other categories, you still can win that bonus prize. Our other bonus prize is best use of Esri APIs and or our ArcGIS Survey 123. So that is uh, specifically targeted towards our Jane Goodall Institute challenge. So please watch one of our Esri API or ArcGIS Survey 123 uh, live streams that are on demand at this, um, at this time, both on Twitch and on YouTube for more information there and to be able to dig deeper into both of those products. All right. Now we also have, join us for our trivia night. We have August 4th at 5 p.m., beginning at 5 p.m. We have our trivia night. We have over $1,500 in prizes to hand out. So the first place team will win $750 in an Amazon card. So pre-register, we do need you to pre-register uh, to win, or I'm sorry, to play. So make sure you scan that uh, QR code there if you got your phone, which most of us do all the time, right? So scan that QR code, make sure you sign up, bring your friends, bring your enemies, you know, whoever you want to beat <laughs> or whoever you want to make sure you win with and uh, join us for a really fun night. That trivia is provided by Geeks Who Drink and uh, they are, it, it's an incredibly entertaining, fun um, live experience and um, it'll be here on Twitch as well. All right, now let's bring that in, in bar. Welcome, Inbar. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Stacy. Thank you for this introduction. And welcome, everyone. Um, 
first thing I want to say is this is interactive and I, I'll go and show you a lot of things, but please, please ask questions. Stop me at any point. Don't wait. If you have any question whatsoever, please ask because I'm here to help. Um, so let's get started. Uh, is my screen visible to everyone? Not just yet. Let's pull Not it up right now. And we're getting, and welcome, Jedediah and DNN LRN. Say good morning to you too. They're saying good morning to both of us. Oh, so nice morning. to have you Thank guys you. here. Thank you. I'm assuming we also have people where it's good afternoon or good evening or good night. So good anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're happy you're here. <laughs> yeah. All right, Envar, I'm going to leave it to you. Thank you. Thanks. And so let's get started. This is our developer center. You see here. Big promotion for the hackathon. Uh, from this menu, you can see all our APIs. And remember, we have a challenge uh, to use more than each signature. But let's start with each signature. Every API, there is a menu here in the left. And then you can find the API reference here. The first thing I'm going to show you is that you can actually make API calls directly from here without really needing anything. You don't have to write any code. You don't have to configure anything. It's really easy. I mean, the e-signature envelopes, uh, and I'm going to find a specific endpoint that I want to show you. This one is called uh, list status changes. Basically, it's a way to find envelope. But that's an example of an endpoint in the e-signature API. Um, and you'll see here this thing called API Explorer. That's the first thing I'm going to show you. API Explorer is a real easy way, the easiest way to call the API, but you still need to have an account. I'm hoping by this point, all of you have a developer account. If not, you just click here. Um, and all you need is name, email, company, and country. Very simple. Create an account. You really need to do that like the very first thing to use DocuSign. So I'm assuming you have it. You click login, get a little login dialogue. Uh, I'm using some demo account here that we use, but you should use your own account. And once you're logged in, basically, you can start making API calls from here. Uh, you'll see that you get the URL, and uh, it automatically fills up information from your account. In this case, this is your account ID, which also shows here. Uh, an account ID is something very important. It is used by every API call almost, and it's unique for your account. It's a grid, uh, so uh, something to keep in mind. Uh, for this particular API call, the only other thing we need is something called from date, which is kind of a date where we want to start Looking at the API call, I'll pick yesterday's date just for this demo. And then all you have to do is click here, get response. The API call is being made. And look here, 200 OK, just like my T-shirt, uh, which means success. Um, and you can expand this, see what you got back. We got like 51 envelopes, all the information about the envelopes, dates, and metadata, and who sent them. Not going to get too much into this. The point of this was really to show you how easy it was to make an API call. Remember, all you had to do is have an account, head off to Dev Center, find the API you want, find the endpoint you want, click on uh, API Explorer, and just hit uh, Get Response down here. So now this was the e-signature API. Remember, you have a challenge to use some other APIs. So let's quickly show you the Click API. It's probably another one that's relatively easy. Um, and, and by the way, when you sign up for the developer account, you get almost all the APIs, almost all the functionality for free as part of, oh, thank you, Mr. Jedediah. <laughs> um, so um, here's the Click API. Again, you, you click on API reference, find a specific endpoint. We'll kind of get the equivalent one, which is called Get ClickRap. And then again, API Explorer. Now, the nice thing is I'm already logged in, so I don't have to do that again. It already knows my account ID, just like before. And in this case, it even remembered that I put from date uh, before. So I can just click Get Response. And another 200, OK, very nice. This one shows me all my click wraps uh, with information about click wraps. Again, I'm not going to get into the details, but uh, click API is something you might want to use. It's, it's kind of relevant for a lot of the uh, good code stuff that everyone is working on. So now I showed you how to really easily call APIs. Now, someone might say, well, how would I know there's so many endpoints, there's so many APIs, how would I know which one to call? That's a very good point. And I'm going to show you the next trick. And the next trick is something called um, API logs. So what we're going to do is head over to the actual app 
Uh, to do that, you can do account dash D, which stands for developer account at doggysign.com. Again, you have to log in. And this takes you into the actual web app, um, the place where our customers and, and you too can use DocuSign. Remember, this is the developer account. So it's really just uh, a demo account. Uh, things here are not valid legally, but it doesn't really matter for the hackathon. And um, you can do anything here for free. Now, if you want, you can also So you can record API calls. And here's, I'm gonna show you how to do this, so take attention. Uh, you go up here to this menu and click My Preferences. So this is where you see your image if you have like a profile, but you'll definitely see your name, account number, all this information. And then you click My Preferences. This takes you here. And down here you see this request login. This is a, a little bit of a, secret some people don't know about this but it's very useful for api log i use this all the time it can log up to 50 api calls and show you the, the api calls you made so for, as you see it's already full so it's not logging anymore so i have to clear them up and then click enable login and click save from this point on anything i do here on the app will be logged for my api logs and i can then see exactly what api calls were called this is probably the most useful tip you'll get in this call, because if you don't know how to do something, you just do it, and then you see what API calls are made. So let's just do something. Um, go back here, let's say I wanna uh, send an envelope, which is, and, and maybe I should mention what an envelope is, because this is a unique term to DocuSign. Um, it's a container for a transaction. So everything you do in e-signature involves an envelope. Uh, an envelope has documents, so let's get up some, document i have all kinds of test documents uh you can have one or more not going to get into the template matching that's a little advanced right now uh envelopes also has recipients you can also have one or more uh, i have some test recipients here i'm using and um, they have different kinds you can have obviously the basic one is signer but you can have something called cc uh, you can change the order of envelopes like this, I mean, of recipients. Last thing that I might want to mention is uh, this message, uh, tips and tricks I'm going to put here. This email subject is the email subject if an email is sent to the recipient, um, and it is a required field. It was filled for you here, as you saw, automatically. But when you use the API, this doesn't happen. You actually have to fill this envelope field, otherwise it will not work. So I just did that, click next. Last thing you need to have an envelope that's valid is what we called, we have a lot of name for those fields. Also tabs, tags. Tabs is the name you'll see in the API. Uh, we can get a couple of those here. Uh, and then we can just hit send and th this envelope is sent to the recipients we identify. So this is the web app. I just used it as a user, but obviously we are interested in the API. So remember, we were recording API calls. We can go back to my preference down here. Look at this, we have 31 API calls. So the web app is a little chatty. There is a lot of APIs real called. Uh, you can click download here. This gives you a zip file. And these zip files include all the API calls that you created. Uh, for example, and I'm not going to go over all of them because there's a lot of stuff here. Most of it's not relevant to you. But here is an example of add envelope recipients. And if you open it, it's a text file, but it shows you exactly, for example, this is the endpoint that was called, uh, which includes the, remember that, account ID. Uh, but in this case, we also have an envelope ID, which is a unique identifier for envelope. So this is the URL, it's a post call. And here is the JSON that was called. You can see the exact JSON that was sent to the API. Uh, and of course you can see the JSON that came back right here because this was a 2-1 created, was successful. You got this JSON back. Um, and play with this at your own time, but you'll see everything about the APIs um, that you made. So this is very useful. Highly recommend to use this. 
Um, I'll do a quick stop here just to see if there are any questions so far. Anyone wants to ask anything about this? Basically, what we covered so far is this, which is called API Explorer. And you do this from Developer Center, which is one website, and then another website, which is our uh, the, not our uh, developer account, our web app for DocuSign. This is where I covered how to do API logs. And so um, highly recommend you use API logs. If you know what you want to do, at least you know what you want to do from the web app. Let's say you want to use a template or a click wrap or whatnot. You can try it out, see what APIs are being called, and then you can call the same APIs from your app. So let's move to the next thing I'm going to show if there are no questions. and. Again, you can ask at any time, don't wait, have to wait for me to ask. So I'm going to show the next thing, which is maybe you're familiar with this. This is called um, Postman. And maybe before I show the tool itself, uh, you can go and I maybe we'll share all those URLs later in some slide or something. This is um, our website explaining how to use the Postman collections and setting up an environment. We don't have all the APIs here, but we have those four. Uh, available. So these are a collection of basically endpoints that are set up for you inside Postman. So once you set everything and click on Postman, I'm, I'm not going to do that because I've already done that. It comes in here and you need to download the Postman tool and it depends if you're on Windows or on um, Mac. There is a different one for each. Um, so you can do all of that. Um, that's actually useful for running many APIs. This is not specific to DocuSign. So any REST API, you can call from Postman. And I think you might need to call another API in this hackathon except for DocuSign. So Postman might be useful there as well. But of course, we are here to talk about DocuSign tips and tricks. So we're gonna show how to call an API endpoint. Uh, this should look familiar. This is a specific endpoint and this is a post call. I have again my, um, account ID. And in this case, I'm trying to create an envelope, which is probably one of the most popular and most useful things to do from the API. I haven't showed it from the API Explorer, but I'm showing it here from Postman. So um, we have the body here, which includes a lot of information about the envelope. Again, I'm not going to cover everything. Remember recipients. Here we have some signer. Uh, here's the status that says I want to send this um, envelope right away. I have a question. Oh, for someone else. <laughs> yeah, please ask questions. I, I'll probably mention this like 10 times just so people ask questions. Um, here's the email sub. Basically, this is all the stuff that I mentioned earlier from the web app, uh, including the document. And the document is encoded here as a base 64. So there is a lot of stuff here that I set up before this meeting, it's this big JSON. Um, then if you want to call it, like you hit send. And oops, what happened here? Um, well, I'm not authenticated. And um, the reason is, and this is where I'm going to talk about authentication, which is probably one of the trickiest problems, and that's why I'm going to talk about it, uh, for the DocuSign APIs. Uh, you can't just call the API without being authenticated. This is a, a big deal in DocuSign. We're all about security. And authentication means that you actually make the API call in the context of a specific account a specific user you have to get a specific token we call this an access token and only once you have that you can call the api um, you can't do the calls without setting authentication now before i showed you api calls from um, api explorer this tool takes care of it for you so you don't have to figure it out but in this hackathon you're going to have to build an integration of your own so the reason I show Postman is because it's kind of the next step. Okay, API Explorer, you don't do anything. It just calls the API for you. Postman, you still have to set authentication. You don't have to write code. So it's like uh, in between. A third step would be you write your own code and set authentication. So we're kind of taking steps to move up the ladder of advancement until you get everything done. So inside of Postman, we have these headers here. And... You see here, this is the most important header. It's called authorization down here. And it has the word bearer and then this huge token here. It's really big. <laughs> um, now, I had this set up a couple of days ago and here's what happened and you should really be aware of this. This token expires in eight hours. 
So um, you will need to generate another one in eight hours. Now there are multiple ways to generate this token and I was debating which one to show here, but since it's a hackathon, I'm gonna show you the one that was designed for hackathon. Um, and maybe some of you know about it, but we are gonna go back into Dev Center, which is this. And under this community menu, there is the good cause hackathon, but there's also hackathon resources. If you click that uh, and you go down here, it says hackathon token generator. This tool is designed especially for hackathons. So please don't use it if you're really building an uh, um, a real integration, but for the hackathon, it's okay to use. You just click get the token here. Now I'm already authenticated for the API Explorer. Um, I'm getting this huge consent thing. This is just basically means that this uh, thing has all those permissions. The reason there's so many permissions here is because this thing was designed, this hackathon token generator, to generate tokens for any and every API and any and every scope and anything you might wanna do. Um, so when you do, you'll get the same thing, but you only get it once for the first time to allow access. If you use it again later, you not have to do that again. So now it's generating the token for you and we should have it any second now, if everything works well, here it is. Uh, it will. The nice thing about this, uh, it see, you see this countdown here. It tells you how long you have with this token before it expires. Once it's expired, you can simply generate another one. And I think uh, we're not going to be here in eight hours, but uh, it will change to a button to generate another one, or you can refresh the page. Uh, the other nice thing is you can click here, copy to clipboard, and the token is now on your clipboard. Uh, we go back to Postman. We go back here. And let's see if I do this right. So, uh, that's a little tricky sometimes. Hopefully I can just replace this with the new one. If not, yeah, let's see, paste. And then I can just click send again um, using the new token and boom. Now I didn't get an error. I get a JSON back, which means success. Um, this JSON has an envelope ID, it even has a URL. Uh, the status, a little bit of stuff, but that means uh, my envelope was created. Now, how do I use this envelope? Well, um, one of the things you can do if you, I mean, we're not going to get a little too much into it, but uh, here's the subject I use here, example, HTML responsive signing, showing something called responsive signing. I can go back in here, go to manage, and look at these cents. This is the tips and trick envelope that I sent earlier, uh, if you remember that one. But um, let's refresh this. Maybe it wasn't refreshed. I should have this HTML responsive signing envelope also here. Mm, let's see. Yeah, here it is. Uh, and so this envelope is awaiting others. Uh, waiting for, and this is another useful tool. It's kind of a tip that not directly relate to DocuSign, but we use it all the time. So I really want to show you, it's something called Mailinator. So sometimes you need lots of email addresses or quick email addresses for testing purposes. Um, you probably have one in Gmail or some other email vendor, or you have one from your company, but if you need more, I use this all the time. I use this website called Mailinator. So see, this is my first name at mailinator.com. And this was just sent. Mailinator, by the way, is not a email provider like Gmail, Yahoo, et cetera. It's only for testing. So the emails are staying there only for a few hours. I don't know exactly, maybe 24 hours. So I can go to this mailinator.com website, um, put up here my name, which is what I used this time. And here is the e email I just got. Now, anyone can see this email. So that's another thing. Don't send anything sensitive, secure, important. This is for testing. If you know the name of the person's name, you can find, see, read their email. So don't use this for real email. But this just shows you that I actually got an email from Postman after creating an envelope and it was sent over and I can sign it here and everything. Um, so again, mailing letter if is a, is a useful thing if you need some quick email addresses for testing purposes that you're not really gonna use for your real. 
Um, okay, so I'm going to show one more thing, but I'm going to stop again and ask if there are any questions. We saw Postman, we saw API Explorer, we saw how to quickly um, uh, uh, record API logs. I'm going to go back into Developer Center, which is where you start and do everything. By the way, the other thing here in the, this menu, you can go to another place called My Apps and Keys. Um, this, I, I'm not sure it will load quickly enough to show it today, but this is uh, where you see your integration keys and your account ID, all kind of like configuration information. So far, we haven't created it here, and I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to create this. But this is everything to do with authentication, um, and um, a lot of them here. But um, I'm not going to get into this right now because I'm trying to show you how you can do it easier and not have to mess with that. But if you do need this, you can find it here in this menu. Last thing I'm going to show is something called Quick Start. Um, you can get to it again from this. You can click on Get Started up here and click Start Building, and it's taking you to this Quick Start. Quick Start is the next level up. Remember, we saw API Explorer. For that, you don't need to do anything. Then we saw Postman. For that, you still need to do authentication. Now we are going to see some code. Um, I am sure all of you have a preferred coding language. So uh, let's call you, you name your hackathon demo. This is a name for your application. Again, you have to be signed in, but I already signed in. So once you sign in for something like API Explorer, uh, token generator, you're signing for everything inside Developer Center. Hackathon demo is just a name. You can call it whatever you want. And here's the cool thing. You need to pick a language. We have eight different languages. Uh, C Sharp, Ruby, Python. Hopefully, you'll find the one you like here. If not, uh, let us know, because we also like feedback. What's my preferred? OK, I'll share that my preferred is C Sharp. Uh, I have some background in C Sharp. It's probably my, the one, one I'm most comfortable with, but I kind of know to use all of those. Uh, but I'm not an expert in Ruby, for example, maybe one day. <laughs> um, so thank you, whoever asked that. Um, yeah, so that's a, a, another thing that maybe we're not stressing so much about the hackathon, but send us any feedback you have. You know, if you're using Dev Center and you're like, ha, I wish this or this is better or there's a bug or anything you see, send us. We, we, are, we are the team that is doing this and we'll be happy to hear your feedback, and if needed, we can fix things, improve things, think about new features. So for example, if you have another language that you're using and you're not seeing it here, let us know. Not promising we'll have it for you tomorrow, but uh, maybe. <laughs> um, I'm going to show Bash, and I'll explain later why I'm showing Bash. Um, and by the way, when you select a language, there's still another thing to select. Uh, you can pick one of multiple code example or a single, and in some coding languages, you can select off-code grant of JWT. I'm going to select this, which is everything. Click Next, then you click Download. Similar to the API logs, this is downloading a zip file. However, this zip file includes code. So uh, it will have another folder in it. I'm going to copy it into some place uh, where I do all my testing. I have this temp folder here. And um, you can do the same thing in your preferred language. I will also show, if I go back in here, there is this quick start overview page. And it's a very useful page because it shows you uh, videos and explanation for all the eight languages. So let's say you prefer Python, there are instructions and a video for Python. Any language, PHP, video for PHP, instructions. So if you're not sure what to do after you got this zip file, come in here, everything is documented. Um, so quickly here, here's our hackathon demo bash, um, and all the code is in here. I'm going to use for this one a tool called Git Bash. And it was already running, so I need to uh, go to the correct. Uh, OK, I'll take a shortcut here. <laughs> Actually, I'll not take a shortcut. Let's do it correctly. Uh, I just don't. I'm not used to using this one, and it's kind of a little 
weird, but I have to go to this, go to temp, and then go to hack. Uh, let's go paint from here. Uh, Oh, ugh. what happened here? Mm. Ah, it's some quotes. Great. And then I need to run it, which is launcher shell script. Okay, great. So this thing is doing the, um, it's just popping the window here, authentication. Uh, similar to what we've seen before, only very few scopes here. And then it tells me you may close this tab and go back. And sorry, we're here. So this is the, maybe I'll make it bigger so we can focus on that. Um, hmm. What happened here? I'm not sure. Ah, something is not working. Uh, okay um let me try it in my other sorry not sure what happened i have some other folder that should work hopefully let's have some other problems here uh, so it's this thing actually has all the same APIs you can pick. I'm gonna pick each signature. And then it can pick between JSON, web token, JWT, or off code grant. I'm gonna pick off code grant. So we'll do the same thing. Go in here, keep on here. And then it has a list of code examples I can pick from. The reason I'm showing you all of this, and, and you can again explore some of those code examples later. And all those code examples are also available in all the other languages. C sharp, Java, et cetera, et cetera. But this one has a kind of, because this is tips and tricks, there is a trick here. <laughs> um, and if you go back to the folder, and I use a different folder than the one I downloaded because I had some issues, but imagine this was the folder I downloaded it from. And then you go to a config folder. The reason I'm showing you is that there is a lot of stuff here. For example, here is API account ID, uh, which, you saw before, but I'm showing you it's, it's here as well. And here is a DS access token. Remember that? We generated it with the token generator. Here's another trick. You can use the bash launcher. The, this we call a launcher. Uh, and we have them in all the languages, C sharp, like I mentioned. Uh, and it shows you the, the token. So this can serve multiple purposes. You can run all those code examples and see how they work. Um, these are all e-signatures, but we have all, for all the other code examples. And you can also see your access token. And then if you want, you can go back and use it. Remember here uh, where we put it in Postman, same thing. So it all kind of goes full circle. This is the access token that you generate. You can generate it with um, the token generator. You can use the one of our code examples from Quick Start, what we call launchers. Uh, you can find this token, by the way, in all the other languages. It's just the easiest to find it in Bash because it's just a file saved to your system. I think I'm going to stop here because I showed a lot, lots of stuff, and I hope it's not overwhelming. Um, but please ask any questions. And if you don't have a question right this second, uh, I'm also available in Slack. There is a channel. If you're not on Slack, please join Slack because then you can ask your questions whenever they come. Uh, yeah, very handy. So um, I'll stay here. I think I'll give it back to Stacy. But if you do have any more questions, please ask them. And otherwise, enjoy hacking. And I'll uh, see you later in Slack or some other session. Bye for now. Well, I think, hang on, we have a pretty great question. So Mr. Jedediah wants to know if you have uh, pajamas with the status 503. Uh, no, but I thank you for the suggestion. I uh, uh, might consider it. <laughs> I think that that's a, I, I'm putting that into the memory bank for maybe some some present for later. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a cool idea, actually. Um, that could be pajamas good... with anything. I don't remember ever getting pajamas from any, high, <laughs> any event. So yeah, good idea. And Will is saying thanks very much. 
Oh, and oh, let's see. <laughs> DNN LRN is saying we'll make that happen. <laughs> So giving a last chance to ask any questions, uh, if you want to ask Inbar any questions um, as well, I'm going to go through a few uh, resources uh, to help you out for the uh, rest of the hackathon. So let's see, we've got our resources available are, let's see, I'm continuing to, oh, here we go. This is a good question. Question is... I do not see API Explorer tab on my dashboard. Why might, or what might that be the reason or why the reason for that? So the API Explorer is not on the dashboard. I don't know what you mean by dashboard, but it's in Dev Center. You need to find it. I can show it again if you want, uh, but you have to go to Dev Center. That's uh, developers, that's the top API uh, website in this uh, slide you're seeing, developers.docusan.com. And then you have to find the API you want. You can start with this signature, but you can find a few others. They also have API Explorer. Then you have to go to API reference, find the specific endpoint you want, and there you'll see API Explorer. So I realize it's a little not as intuitive or as quick. You have to do a few clicks, but maybe you can try it right now while we are on here. And if you can still can't get to it, I can try and show or you can maybe ask specifically where you get stuck. Okay. But API Explorer is there in the Dev Center. Great, and that is the developers.docusign.com to get to our developer center. So uh, while you might be working on that, uh, I'm gonna go through a few of our um, developer and hackathon resources. So as I said, develop our developer center, um, that is your one-stop shop for all things DocuSign um, for developers, it is a, wealth of information. So definitely check that out. Um, we also have some a number of other uh, resources noted here. Uh, check out some of our developer blogs. Uh, there's also, those are great uh, places to find information. Uh, we did post uh, a Postman uh, blog uh, previously. So check that one out. <clears throat> we also have some Postman um, videos over on our YouTube channel. So plug on our YouTube channel and that's developers, uh, excuse me, uh, DocuSign for developers on YouTube. So look for that channel. Um, as well, we have our Slack channel. So make sure you are using our Slack invite. And this is where the magic of our admin team, we're going to ask that um, somebody drop that Slack channel invite there. So please join the Slack channel. A great resource to ask any questions you might have. We have um, folks from Esri as well as DocuSign. Inbar is on there. He's Inbar is actually one of our top resources. He is always jumping on and answering questions as quickly as possible. So really appreciate that. Um, and then as well, we've got Gene Goodall Institute. Um, so you can ask a lot of questions there and get your answers very quickly. Um, thank you for adding the uh, Slack channel workspace uh, invite link, link. I appreciate that. Also a special call out we have on Tuesday, August 2nd at 9 a.m. We're doing another challenge help session. So that is also where you can uh, hop on Get a couple pro tips and then as well, you'll be able to answer or ask, excuse me, and we'll answer any of your questions you might have. Um, we will also be hosting a new sample apps, uh, my API calls session, uh, August 3rd at 9 a.m. Um, and special call out back to our uh, back to our trivia session. I'm going to post that up here once again. So join trivia on uh, Thursday, August 4th at 5 p.m. Uh, it is going to be a really good time. So with that, I don't see any more questions that we have. So I think that we are going to call it a day for today. Thank you again, Imbar, for joining us and showing us so much uh, amazing information. You had some really great pro tips, so I appreciate that. And everybody will see you uh, the next time and happy hacking. Thank you again. Bye.